Hi friends, Jake with GD Honey Acres here. Today we're going to figure out how to make a jig to use on my table saw with a dado blade. That jig's purpose is going to be cutting these slots out for handles, for grab holes, for our different hide boxes. Well, let's get started and have some fun doing it. Alright, now I had some pieces left over from when I made my telescopic covers. So I went ahead and just tried to use as much lumber from that as possible. I made, I will be putting the metric measurements probably in the video as I edit this and I'll also put it in the description. But I made two boards at 15 inches by two and a quarter, and one board at 24 inches by two and a quarter. And I've already cut out a chunk of my quarter inch plywood at 15 by 20 inches. Now I need to make the little strips that fit in the grooves that are on the table saw that you would uh, use for different jigs and such. Alright, let's get started doing that. I'll be cutting that out with my circular saw, kind of like I did when I cut the top piece for the frame of the telescopic cover. Let's get to that. Alright, I've got a line made right here and it's three quarters of an inch. So I'm going to cut with a blade on this side of that line. i got to do two of these cuts because I've got two grooves in my table saw that I'm going to use as my uh, jig holder. Alright, let's get cutting this. There's one. I'm going to go ahead and take straight edge here. We'll make a mark three quarters of an inch right there and then I'll take my P-square line it up here bring it down to that mark and go ahead and draw a line all the way across you can use pen, marker, chalk line, what have you, doesn't matter now let's get this next one cut. There we have our two pieces. All right. Now we can kind of start to assemble everything. Let's get started on that. All right. We got to go ahead and cut these to length. So I'm just going to set it in the groove. Make my mark. We'll come out here and I'm just going to use the hacksaw to do this. Now on a hacksaw, the way the teeth are designed, you do not get a cut when you move back. You only get a cut on the forward stroke. So if you go back, kind of lift up and release pressure. That's there you can go. Once you get in your groove, like you saw there, it cuts real fast. Now what I'm going to do, since I've already got my um, fence here set, where I want the butt of my uh, box, we're just going to set this on top because I'm going to put a board that's basically going to be right where this fence is sitting. We're going to put this right on there. And I'm going to go ahead and take my brad nailer slash air stapler with some half inch staples and go ahead and staple that, those pieces in place. Oh, all right, there we go. Now that we have that tacked, let's go ahead and pull it out, set it right there, then I'm going to grab my T-square, we're going to line this up right on the edge of where I want to run my staples, so that way I know I'm good to go. Be right there. All right. 
Now, just because I want to, I'm going to flip it over. I'm going to do the same thing all the way down this. There we go. I got that piece. That'll be great and secure. Although, apparently, I have it back. There we go. Just like that. That ain't going to move on us. I'm going to move my table saw. Alright, next. Let's go ahead. I'm going to remove this guy. I'm going to swap out staples. Slightly bigger to my one inch staples. Turn my air pressure up. Only slightly. We're going to take our board here. We're going to put this board right here. I made some marks earlier to where this kind of follows the uh, length of the fence. What I'm going to do is going to put a little smidgen of glue on there. Like that. Put it up against. Line my marks up. I'm going to go ahead, run a staple in on each end, right around right in the middle here. Now push in, when you do this, that way you get it nice and flush. Give that glue a chance to set in there and have somewhere to be. I'm going to run a few more in just to give it some strength. I want it to be nice and strong. That way it lasts me a long time. I'm probably being excessive with it, but I really don't care. There we go. Perfect. Just like that. Now we're going to take our other pieces and do the same exact thing on the sides right here. Like that. So for this one, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and move the jig down some. So we're going to have it sitting perfect like that. Now we're going to go ahead and apply some more glue like we did earlier. Oh, got to open it first. That might help some, won't it? Set it right there. Grab the air stapler alright there she is now we're going to slide it back this way do the same exact thing over on this side Nothing too excessive, nothing too major. Now this piece is a little warped. Just like that. She is secured. That part of that is done. Alright, this is how it's going to fit. I'm going to go in just like this. As the theory is, you're going to first do a plunge cut where you kind of slide it set in here. You're just going to rotate it forward all the way down on the dado. The next piece, I'm going to have to come in right here and kind of follow a kind of a half moon like that. All right, let's figure that part out. All right, guys, now what I've done here, is I went ahead and I cut a board to fit from this part to the other part. I made my mark here where I want it to be because eventually I'm going to be stapling this in place. And what I'm also going to be doing is this piece here. It's going to go right here, but I need to cut a curvature in it. So what I'm probably going to do is kind of freehand it here and then cut it out on the bandsaw and then go over to a sander and smooth it up. 
I've got a belt sander, so that's what I'm going to use. All right, let's go over, let's go ahead and freehand this curve and go over to the bandsaw. All right, so I've got my curve made. I'm going to do my best to follow it in this bandsaw here. Let's go ahead and get started. Watch where your fingers are when you're running bandsaws, please. Now, as you can see, I left the line is I'm going to go ahead and take the rest of that material off with my sanders. You can free freehand sand this, whatever. You could probably use a palm sander; would work just fine too. But I'm going to go over to my belt sander and use that. All right, that took no time at all with that nice belt sander. See that? That that'll hopefully be my little curve to get this done right. Let's go ahead and lop this one off. What we'll do is we'll take this, set it right here, get my curve again, and cut it off. And uh, this time I'll show you how I do that on the belt sander. All right, I've got the piece we just did sitting on the new. Just take my pen, go right through, make that mark, make my mark on my back side, and there we go. All right, let's go ahead and do the same thing and cut that little chunk out. Just like that, we have our little curve. Alright, now let's go ahead and start putting these pieces together. Alright, it'll sit like that. So I'm going to put a little a squirt of glue. Right, pull it out all the way, that'll help. There we go. Little dibby dab right, right there. A little dab over here. Let's go ahead and position these where we want them. On our previous marks. I did already go ahead and switch back to the one inch staples. I'm going to go ahead and staple one. Staple the other. Now, we've got these little curve pieces here. Yeah. What I'm going to do, is I'm going to put, if I get it back out of there, glue here, glue here, I run a staple on the bottom. Should be plenty. Just kind of button it right in this corner here. Just like that. There should be plenty to hold that girl. Do the same thing with this side here. I'm going to run a little bit of glue there. Bottom, back. Run it, set it right up against it. Now the next fun part is going to be making my hole right here with the dado blade. Let's get to that. Alright, now what I'm going to do, I've installed my dado blade. I put a C-clamp on each side to help hold this puppy down. I'm going to be holding back here, standing off to the side just in case something decides to move. I don't think it will. And I'm just going to slowly rotate this thing up. All right, let's see what happens. All right, that wasn't so bad. Now the thing I'm going to do is I'm going to elongate it one way or the other. That way, if I want to make my handles a little bit wider, I can. All right, now I went ahead and I made a center line in this uh, jig here. 
to put in the center of the blade. What I'll end up doing is I'll make the first cut, and then I'll end up scooching over a little bit, making the next one, scooching over the rest of the way, making the next one, and then go back the other direction with it. All right, let's try this out. Now make sure the ledges where your frames are going to sit is facing you. That way you have your hand hold the right direction. Let's get going. <laughs> quick to show you there's that handhold now I want a bigger purchase to grab a hold of I elongated this side I'm gonna elongate this side now let's move it over a little bit apparently I already did on accident move it back to center here let's do it again <laughs> There we go. I'm a nice elongated hand hold. And now I've got handles for my hives. Now I went ahead and after doing a few of these, figured out something to get it to where it's nice and smooth where you won't have to sand it. After you do your first initial plunge cut, you come up on those half moon pieces and you go down with it. Just come back up with it. It'll be perfectly smooth. Watch this. Well, let's get the sawdust out of here real quick. See that? How nice and smooth it is? So after you go back, your first down, downward movement, come back up with it slowly. You'll get nice and smooth like that, won't have to sand at all. Alright, I'm hoping I helped you all out because I couldn't find many videos on this. I saw many people using these jigs, but no one ever really explained how to make one or showed how to make one. Hopefully this will help you out and give you some ideas on how to make one for yourself. I mean, there's just something about doing a project on your by yourself doing all these building things working with your hands it's just great all right if you like what i did helped you out in any way please give me a like and subscribe i'll keep posting videos up on my uh, beekeeping adventures and all the exploits involved i'll pray for your family pray for mine have a good rest of your day night morning whenever you watch this i'll catch you all later and by the way Thanks for watching, y'all are the best.